podcast powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parikh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. Allie Green and Mickey Mellon had a history of outsourcing work to one another. After years of this back and forth, with work flowing from their individual agencies, Allie and Mickey realized it would make more sense to start a company together. In 2009, they founded Green Mellon, a digital marketing agency dedicated to building a brighter web. Here today to share the story of becoming partners and her lessons learned after 13 years in business, Allie Green and Mickey Mellon. Welcome to the show, y'all. Hey, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Sean Jay. Yeah, I'm excited to have uh, both of you on. Uh, It's not often that we have uh, this kind of story where uh, two founders have been doing work and then sending work back and forth uh, and then combining. I I think it's actually pretty unusual. Um, But first, before we get into that, I'd love to hear your guys' background um, and, you know, was your, was your firm that you had before Green Melon your first entrepreneurial thing or, or was there stuff before then? So Mickey, you want to start? Sure. So it's actually a problem we have is that we didn't have a firm before. Neither of us have worked in an agency until the one we're in now. So <laughs> over the years, having staff that have come from other agencies has been very helpful because they can tell us, you do this way better. You might want to fix this a little, you know, fix that thing there. We were both actually working in a church together, a huge mega church with, you know, 100 staff members and stuff. And so we were both there and then we kind of split out on our own separately to start our own little individual businesses, but needed each other's help all the time. And so, yeah, that led us eventually here. Yeah. So that was, uh, Mickey, that was your first kind of entrepreneurial thing, kind of going on on your own and, you know, putting yes, it was. Yeah. 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 So I had, I was starting to build a little web design business on my own and then had an opportunity. I had a buddy that ran the Google Earth blog. Um, it got tons of traffic back in the day and lots of ad revenue. And I was helping him with it a little bit. And he decided to go on a trip around the world on a boat with his wife. So he sold his house, sold his cars. And he said, I need someone to run the blog. I'll give you 75% of the revenue. And so it wasn't a ton, but it was a couple of grand a month. It was enough for me to take the jump to start trying to do this web design thing on my own with this extra revenue from this blogging coming in on the side. And nice. that's what made me make the leap. And then simultaneously, Allie made a separate leap off yeah, to hers. That's yeah. right. We... We were working together for maybe three or four years. And when we both went out on our own to pursue our own careers, our own freelance type work, um, we realized we are still working together so much. Um, But I, let's see, my background, I went to um, three different schools, um, Auburn, Kennesaw State, and SCAD. Um, SCAD was because of the the direction I was positioned once I started working at um, the church. The church, yeah. So know, I yeah. was pursuing marketing and advertising. I had this vision of working at a boutique advertising firm. I had already pinpointed like three or four firms I wanted to work at. I was going to create the next Apple um, campaign one day mm-hmm. at this boutique firm. Um, so uh, it ended up becoming the intern at the church that Mickey worked at, yeah. where they needed a lot of graphic design help. Ah. As churches do. As churches and Brochures do. and pamphlets brochures and just, yeah. And sermon Not series. exciting stuff. But. No, no, no. So, okay, I'll go take some classes at SCAD and see how I can help you guys out. And then found myself in this direction of graphic design, which was not my original intent. Um, but, you know, when Mickey and I began designing and building websites, um, we had a lot of interest and mm-hmm. we used to build those old fashioned HTML websites together. <laughs> yep. Had my own CMS I built ago. for a little while and yeah, replaced it with WordPress before long. But yeah, we didn't even mean to start a company at first. It was just, hey, we're both building sites. Let's just build sites together for that part of our lives. And, yeah. and well, we need some more help and maybe we need an office and a name and just kind of. Built it as it as it arrived. An so. accidental agency. Yeah. I like to say. yeah. Do do either one of you have entrepreneurship in the family? Like, were your parents entrepreneurs or anything like that? No. I came from a sales yeah. background. We are very sales heavy in my family, which is the direction I was heading in my university. Um, 
schooling. Yeah. Like sales. Yeah. yeah. I've always had a bit of an entrepreneurial bent. Like at one point I wanted to start a, we were going to move to South Georgia to be with the in-laws. And I was going to start a computer store down there. And so I was researching how to, you know, how to build a computer shop and had tried different things before. Um, so I had kind of that angle to it, but again, didn't realize that's what I was even doing when we, when we started this. So yeah. Yeah. It was kind yeah. of cool. When I, and I don't know if I mentioned that when, when I was at the church, I actually had a woman approach me while I was there. And she said, I've been seeing a lot of the things come out of, you know, a lot of the, the design things. I, I'd really love to talk to you. I'm a designer myself. Would you like to come work for me? So between the church and Mickey, I worked for this lady for not long, not long Yeah, <laughs> because it yeah. was not a good match. Um, I, see. I thought I would make a lot more doing freelance than I was able to. <laughs> yeah. So lesson learned. That was not the direction. To so, go. so Ali, for you leaving the church, um, what was your kind of like way that you made the ends meet? Because Mickey had the Google earth blog, which is <laughs> such a random sentence to say, by the it way, is, yes. uh, <laughs> totally. did you, did you have anything to make ends meet or was it just hustling and, and just you know, I was out? 21. Yeah. I was still kind of in college. Um, so I uh, was probably still living on mom and dad's dime to an extent. I was so young. Yeah. So, I mean, no idea what I was going into. Yeah. Um, so I remember when I, my, my husband and I were engaged and Mickey and I were starting to work together a little bit more. There was one February where I think um, I brought in $50 for the month. <laughs> and thankfully he was, you know, so lucrative doing what he was doing right out of yeah. college. So we just kind of, you know, we, we figured it out, I guess. Mm -hmm. And Mickey and I put our, <laughs> we both one day said, well, how much are you making? And I was like, oh, how much are, Yeah, oh we, we looked at our taxes from the previous year and we both made very little, but very it was little. almost identical. It was, I don't know, 42,000 and the other was 42,000. I don't even know what the numbers were. They were like almost identical. So we said, all right, easy enough. Let's just put it in one pile, split it 50-50 and go from there. So. Yeah, I know you kind of alluded to, Sanjay, earlier that most partnerships don't start that way. I think it's often a person starts a business and finds a partner to help them out. Right. And that wasn't us at all. I and mean, we were 50-50 from literally the first second, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's either that or you have a couple of partners that start scra from scratch. Um, you mm -hmm. both had something and then you combine the two things and right. maintain the 50-50. Exactly. So I got to ask you a name of, uh, a question about the name. Um, so how did you decide whose last name was going to go first? Well, that was interesting because that wasn't even her last name yet. So when we named the company, she was engaged. So it seemed pretty likely, but we were kind of hoping this dude turned out okay. <laughs> seems to be all right. But. Man, that, that's a pretty big risk there because if that had yeah. fallen away, it's like, well, who's green? Nobody. Right. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. It's just the color of the melon. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but, so, you know, sentence structure, we had to have the um, adjective before the noun. So that's <laughs> there you go. That's what I, says. From, from the grammar. I, I see. Yeah, I was thinking about that myself. I was like, melon green just doesn't have the ring. It, right. That was the whole thing. It just didn't sound right. So, it's, yeah, it just I didn't was okay sound right. acquiescing on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, OK, so let's talk about it. So you so 42,000 basically in, in revenue. I'm making you guys, some number. Yeah, not much. Rough, maybe in that ballpark. Um, what happened the, the first year after you? both joined up. So you incorporated, made it a real company. It was just the two of you. When did you start hiring? What was revenue like? What, what happened? I think revenue stayed pretty flat probably for the first year or so because we were still doing the same kind of work. It was just instead of me building sites and getting paying her a little bit and her paying me a little bit, it was just easier to do that. And I still had my side stuff. So revenue didn't shoot up very quickly. And it wasn't like we had a grand plan for right. growth. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> we were two freelancers who were going in to practice our crafts together. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, that that was that was somewhere we messed up again, not having that angle before. We didn't have plans and goals. We're just like, let's just do this together and build websites when people ask for websites to be built. Like easy enough. And so it took us a few years to kind of figure out, okay, let's maybe plan a little bit. And really I think it came about about three years in when she okay. needed more help with design. And that was so we need to hire a designer. So if we're hiring someone, this is a different kind of situation we're getting into now. And so, so that um, was the first, first time you actually hired somebody to be beyond the two of you. Yeah, it was probably about three years in, I think mm -hmm. we okay. hired her. And then we said, well, we have a person. We're all here in Marietta. We're supposed to have an office, right? No companies have offices. So we got an office and we were a little you know, sick of meeting at coffee. Right. Correct. Shops yeah. Too. And so, yeah. yeah, we've been a while looking for offices and found this place here in Mar Marietta Square. And it's worked out great for us. We've been in the same place for nine years now. And yeah, slowly just kind of expanded based on need for the most part from there. Just when one of us got too busy with their role, we'd hire that role out and then get busy with something else and hire that out. And right. 
So uh, yeah, it's very funny to hear you say that because obviously in today's age, um, if you were right. starting this now, you'd be like, oh, we don't need an office. Um, we can right. do everything remote. So um, let's dive into that a little bit. Are, are you guys still in the office? It looks like you're still in the office. Is everybody still coming to the office? Like where are you guys at and thinking about that? Great question. We are in a little bit of a crossroads right now, which obviously COVID threw us into. Um, but our team, we're a team of eight. Okay. And during COVID, one of our team members, um, which we're thrilled, she was able to move back to Michigan to be close to her family as she started her own family. Um, so we kind of, our first employee drifted up and we kept her and we would never want to, you know, she's such a crucial part of our team. She's our project manager and she's remote. And then a year later, we had the need for a designer and a contractor that we've worked with for years and years happens to be in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And of course, we it works with, yeah. it works with Brooke, so it's going right. to work with Joanna. So we brought her and on. It does. So, and it does. <laughs> yeah. So now of our team of eight, um, two of them are remote. The rest of us still come in once a week. And then Mickey and I come in an additional day for kind of our partnership strategy day. Um, so today is our Tuesday team day in the office. Okay. Nice. Nice. So um, let's talk about that. Like, how do you think through, like you guys have now been together for 13 years doing this together, mm -hmm. um, nine years with employees, right? Is that right? Yep, ten, you got nine, it, yeah. 10 years. Something like um, that. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you think about um, working with one another and making sure that um, everything is going right for the both of you, as well as the team as a whole? I did notice, I got to say on the website, neither one of you is the CEO. Uh, both of you are, are technical partners or creative partner uh, for e each one of you. So neither one of you is identified. So how do you think through like making decisions and, and working with one another? I think our, our if you laid out how the two of us work, we're very different in a lot of ways. Like she's all design, I'm all technical. And so any question that falls to either of those, it goes to the other one. If I say, I'm not sure I like that design on there. And she says, no, it's good. I say, okay, your eyes, it's good. If I say we need this new tool and she pushes back, we'll discuss it. But ultimately... It's my call. And I think the lines have been shockingly clear on that stuff really since the beginning where we don't have arguments really because we both have the same goals and we both feel how you should treat people and how to treat clients and what kind of work we want. And so anything else that falls apart usually falls pretty easily to one of our buckets without much work. And then you've probably noticed there's obviously more to leading a company. There's mm -hmm. HR, there's finance, there's operations, <laughs> there's so many things. So Mickey and I, when we meet on Thursdays mm -hmm. and have our, so we kind of practice the EOS, or excuse me, the um, yeah, EOS. EOS model yeah. of traction. Um, traction. That's yeah. what I was going for. We practice the traction model for managing our company um, and we meet on Thursdays. We kind of throw all of those items onto our IDS list. It might be HR, it might be a finance question, and we really work through them together. Mm -hmm. um, we know that some things may fall on me more and some things may fall on Nikki more, but we kind of put our minds together to work through a lot of those ownership decisions. And we have a business coach and um, kind of an outsourced finance team that we lean on quite a bit as well. Yeah. The, and then, the, do, do, doing the books is probably, for me, at least one of the most painful things. So yes. um, <laughs> having an outsourced team for that is great. Go ahead, Mickey. I was just going to say, so with the EOS model, the entrepreneurial operating system, there's a whole books and stuff people can read about that. But you should have a visionary and an integrator at the top. Those are the two roles. And we are both natural integrators. Neither of us really have this grand vision for the future, but we're both great at getting things done. And so that's been, I guess, kind of a struggle almost that I'm trying to put myself more in the visionary seat, but it's difficult because we're just getting things done and it's working. So yeah, we, we kind of we love a good to do list. Right. right exactly. <laughs> so. We're both I mean, we both like being in the company. We both mm -hmm. like seeing things get done and orchestrating the happenings that happen within these walls. Um, so when it comes to dreaming up, what could this company be? We tend to look at each other and say, we love what we have. You know, mm -hmm. why do we have to be something grander? Can't we stay an eight to 12 person shop and be just as content? So, um, so no big plans, Ali, to do the next Apple ad or anything else like that. Is that, <laughs> is that gone those, now? Th those were very eager 20 year old aspirations, I'd say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what, what, still happy to consider it, but yeah. I like where we are. Yeah. <laughs> so if Apple's calling, if they're, if they're needing a, uh, we'll agency take record, I'll take their call. You'll take their yeah. call. Okay. Good. That's good to know. Um, so what, what are kind of the, the grand plans for the company? Is it, is it to stay small and, and lean and, and serve, you know, the, the range of clients that you do now, or is it something different? No, it's basically to say, stay small and lean. Everyone we talk to that's grown 
an agency says around 12 or 15, things change. Once you get to that number of employees, things are different. Not bad uh-huh. necessarily, just different. And we're not sure we want that different. You know, we love our team. There's a few more roles we want to bring in. Uh, we have plans for that in the next couple of years. But stop 12 is kind of our hard stop in theory. And so we'll see. We've granted we've been you know nine years to get to eight people. We're taking our time very deliberately all the way. So yeah, I think what we've determined in a lot of the connections that we have within the agency world, within the business owners owner world is you either build a company to sell or you build a company for your lifestyle. And Mickey and I are both aligned on the fact that we want a lifestyle company where we can enjoy working within what we've built rather than grow, 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 you know, don't sleep, don't eat for yeah, 10 don't, years. Don't take a paycheck, sell. just don't hire paycheck. people. Yeah, right. which is a fine way. To, we, I'm Sanjay, you know more of these companies than I do. That They do all that for a couple of years and then they sell it for $40 million. So it's not a bad way to go. Mm-hmm. It's just not what we want. We like enjoying our time and Ali can probably speak to that even more, but just having freedom and flexibility and healthy profits and it, it we're happy. It works out well. Yeah. So, so thinking back then on these last um, 13 years, what do you guys feel like the, the biggest risk is that you took during that time? And, and it might be a different answer for both of you, for each of you. Yeah, yeah, because we, we're both rather risk averse in general. Again, we're only eight employees, but I think hire, every hire has been the biggest risk. You know, we had a coach years ago show us, like your revenue should go up in a nice steady line. But when you hire someone, that's a jump. Like those are big stair steps. And so you, you can't hire at the same pace as revenue. You hire, it's a substantial jump up. And so every hire has been, yeah, very, very nerve wracking. And it's, they've all worked out, not all, they've mostly worked out very well. The team we have now is fantastic. If you're all listening, you guys are great. Um, but yeah, those have been the biggest, it's scary. Cause I mean, not only is it revenue and figuring out that sort of stuff, but someone's life is sort of in your hands. I mean, that's their livelihood. They need to pay their bills and they're counting on you to do it. And that's been that's scary. And then when things like COVID hit it, was scary as well, even though we weathered it very well. Yes. And related, I would have given the same answer, but it also made me remember some of the scariest moments are when you find a team member that's not aligned and Mm -hmm. isn't the fit that you thought they might be. And, and whether they need to go quickly or whether you want to find a new place for them in the company or a new place for them in the world, you Mm -hmm. know, we've had that situation before we found a good fit elsewhere. Um, but you know, we really care about our team and we really care about their, their mental health, their, their professional growth. And we want to make sure that we're fostering a good, healthy culture within our company. And you have to prune sometimes to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's talk about that. I'm, I'm a big fan of organizational and kind of company culture. Um, what do you all do to help kind of reinforce that and thinking about you know, bringing on that new hire is, is really the most risky time uh, of that uh, new employee coming on and making sure that they get the culture and they're a right fit. Like, what do you guys do to, to make sure that the person that you're bringing on is a good fit? It's hard. I mean, I would <laughs> say during yeah. the interview phase, we always do a team interview. So Mickey and I will do the first two or three conversations, uh-huh. whether it's from, you know, from coffee to an actual interview to something that's, you know, maybe our coach or business right, coach yeah. will interview them. Um, and then we take it to team and we say, go have lunch with team. Without go, us. Without yeah. us. Yes. Okay. Go have one-on-one calls, often virtual with team. And then we all come back together and discuss the chemistry and, and internally. And, mm-hmm. and is that the entire team or is it a section of the team? It often depends on logistics. Yeah, I mean, so. right now there's only four other people local. I mean, there's six of us in town, so there's only four others local. So the four of them would go to lunch. And I think with the last hire, I think one of them had to take a separate lunch because they weren't around and there's some video calls and just, we just want them to have some time away from us. So hopefully everyone can speak their mind freely because we don't want, we don't want our team over glamorizing things either. And then we have a great employee that quits in six months because it's not what they thought. So we try to have we encourage everyone to be super transparent so we can make sure it's a good fit. Right, right. Um, I'd like to dig into uh, one of the other things that you guys have talked about is having a business coach. Uh, when did that happen for y'all? And and is it one coach for the both of you? Is it one coach for each of you? Like, w- w- what's the logistics there? And and what kind of value have you found out of doing that? Yeah, you've had more coaches, so you can start. Yeah, it's been yeah. a little bit of both. I don't know when we first, maybe I would say 2016, 17, yeah, something like guess, that. If I'm putting myself into the, the past here, but I started, I think, with our first coach experience, and it was just for me. And it was a, um, and I still, oh my gosh, she's but she's one of the best things that I've had, one of the best relationships that I've had in my life. Um, I call her my work therapist, and mm-hmm. um, she is a women in leadership 
coach. Okay. Um, so she specifically focuses on focuses on women in leadership roles. Um, she's the one who ultimately my biggest life lesson from her was permission to be creative with my days. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we are so the American culture is so <laughs> structured and pre COVID, and this was a pre COVID lesson was so structured into an eight to five and nine to whatever it is. And I can't tell you how many nights I worked, you know, I stayed in this office until seven at night until the sun went down and, and me and my developer would walk out together and we would just be like, this is not the lifestyle I want. So when I started a family and started working with this specific, specific coach and she gave me permission and sometimes I need permission. We've, a lot of our coaching wins have been them giving us permission uh, to do things. Right. Yeah, for and sure. I'm like, I didn't know I could do that. Like, yeah. Yes, you're a grown up. You can do this <laughs> um, to be creative with my days. So I was able to introduce something that I call scheduled variety into my days, which makes me feel really fulfilled personally when I know I can accomplish something personally in my day, whether that's being at my kids, you know, lunch because, I, you know, their school lunch, I can go stop in and have lunch with them or being their mystery greeter or I'm doing something here productive with the team and, and having a good networking lunch or something outside out in the community. If I can do both of those things in one day, I feel very accomplished. And so she gave me permission to mix my days up where I don't have to be sitting chained to a desk, you know, nine to five. That was a good learning lesson. Yeah, we encourage the same from our team too, to, you know, they don't have to be chained for those hours either. They'll exercise during the day or do whatever they need. As long as they get their work done, that's the main thing. And, that ultimately becomes the, the most difficult part is establishing that trust. Not difficult, just time time consuming, I guess. You know, a lot of our team we've had for five, seven years now, and so we trust them implicitly. I don't know what they do much of the day, and that's okay because the work gets done, and so we're all happy, and hopefully they're able to balance things out in a way that works for them. Yeah. What, what about you, Mickey, in terms of business coach? Do you have somebody or? So, yes, yeah, so we have two others. So one is Jason Blummer. Um, he's our CPA. He's fairly well-known. He's one... He did his marketing very well in that he has a podcast and he has other marketing things. He's spoken events. We followed him as kind of a, a fan for three or four years. Just <laughs> this guy knows his stuff. And then eventually we needed that kind of work and said, hey, I know a guy that can do it. And it's worked out well. And then we have a local business coach, too, that's more. Jason's firm is all about creative agencies. He works with other creatives. So he's able to say, hey, your percentage of this kind of revenue is lower than our other clients. You know, maybe you should look at that. And then we have a local business coach that's more just general business help, mm -hmm. you know, just with yeah, you know, culture and hiring and just best practices for that sort of thing. Because again, we didn't know what we were doing. So getting some of that kind of help is, is great. And as Alex said, in both cases, them giving us permission is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with EOS, we've talked about, you know, the EOS traction model. That's very specific how you're supposed to do it. We just didn't like parts of it, but that's how you have to do it. And Jason told us one day, like, no, you don't. Do whatever you want. Like, you don't have to do those parts if you don't want to. He said, that's great. Oh, so great. We're, we're grownups. We can do what we want. Most entrepreneurs are not rule followers. They're, they're pretty, uh, pretty ruthless when they get out and they make their own rules. Mm -hmm. We're both rule followers. Yeah. So we're quite unique when it comes to um, business owners. Yep. Yeah, I got to say, I'm I'm not a rule follower. I, I yeah, break see. rules all the time, but uh, <laughs> but that's the fun of it. And, and that said, you know, we need both, right? We need people mm -hmm. that... Uh, uh, rain those of us that break rules all the time back in. Um, and then we need people like me to get you guys uh, out, of, out of your uh, safe zones and, and doing crazy exactly. things. So let's talk about um, that that split of, of work-life balance. You guys kind of alluded to it already um, and how you're mixing up your days and making sure that you're doing life stuff and not just work stuff all day long. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think about that? How do you work through your days um, you know, is there a set time for you both to do certain things like exercise and work out or, you know, have lunch with your significant others or, you know, whatever it is? Yeah. So good question there. So yeah, we don't like to call it work-life balance as much as work-life blend, which is kind of what Ali alluded to before, having them kind of mixed throughout. I spent a couple of years ago, I spent a week logging my time just in a spreadsheet every 15 minutes. Just what am I doing? And I noticed there's a lot of times, especially like in the evenings where I'm at my computer, sort of working, sort of playing, like... <laughs> I don't even know how to call it. So it does kind of blend nicely. I'm catching up with some emails, but playing Fortnite or whatever, you know, doing different things. Allie's in a bit different situation though with her two kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I had to, and I kind of alluded to the scheduled variety thing that I like to introduce into my days. Um, so, and I actually, the other thing that Barbara, my original business coach um, helped me with was scaling back. Um, I couldn't be, so I give 100% in everything that I do. So I was giving 100% to my business and trying to give 100% to my family. 
Um, so thank goodness for this guy here who works 110% all the time. <laughs> Um, we had a pretty, a, a pretty serious conversation about my time and if I was able to just continue to do this. And we decided I was going to go back to a part-time ownership owner's role. Um, so I actually only work 20 hours a week. Um, in order to do that, I think I'm, I, I've kind of been switching it around, but now I'm kind of an eight to two model. Yeah. Um, We're playing different ways with it, but yeah, yeah. getting it a part-time. Yeah. So in that for way- For a couple years now. For a couple years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This I would say yeah. five years even. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been so much better for me to not feel like I have to put in the 60 hours that I put in when we were growing this company, which it absolutely required every right. minute of those hours to get the company to where it is today. Um, and now that it is here and we are rather self-sufficient with a team that provides service without our input, mm -hmm. I'm able to scale back. And what I'm trying to do now is get the admin off my plate and focus on connections and people and and just not even for business sake, just for personal sake, just continue enriching lives. And hopefully that benefits everybody. Yeah. yeah and, and the interesting thing that came out of that, too, is when she went to part time prior to that point, we didn't pay ourselves anything fixed. We just kind of said, hey, at the end of the month, what are the things looking like? OK, let's each take five grand or, you know, just it was kind of haphazard. And that's where Jason and some of our other coaches have helped. Like, all right, let's figure out a proper salary. And then she gets half my salary, but then we still get owner benefits and just trying to figure out how that works. So, you know, so that's been, it's forced us to grow up a little bit more too, to, which things we should have done previously anyhow, it forced us to do, which is good to get our acting gear there. It's good to have somebody from the outside telling you like, what are you doing? You're, 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 yeah, exactly. Like, oh yeah. Doing things is. very haphazardly. Um, yep. and, and there's something to be said about that though, doing it that way as well, right? Like, I think some of this probably comes from the fact that both of you have never had an agency before. Exactly, um, for sure. And who's to say that the way agencies run is the right way? Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you've found a better model for it. So um, I, I don't know if I would put 100% stock in in everything that a coach tells you or somebody <laughs> like me tells you, sure. but um, right. it, it's great that you guys have found your way and 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 figured all of this out. Um, so let's let's uh, one more question before I, I ask you the the big question for you know, our listeners, um, is let's talk about productivity and kind of, you know, how do you think about people being pro productive as well as yourselves? Um, Ali, you're basically half time, but you're trying to make that as productive as possible. Are there yeah. tools, are there tricks, are there things that you use to help make sure that you're staying on task? Mickey, you mentioned that you did some time tracking stuff. Is there something that you did or is that paper and pencil? Like, what do you guys use to, to make sure you're productive all the time that you're spending? Yeah, it's it's tough. That that was paper. It was Excel, but it was basically hand <laughs> hand tracking for the time. There's no paper and pencil in my world, but it's as close <laughs> as you get, I guess. But yeah, there's a lot of different things, and it's come out more recently too with Allie. Like we're both big inbox zero people, and we sort of force that on our team too, saying, "Hey, you get things done, put them in their proper places." But it's difficult now when she takes off on Thursday and she's off on Fridays, and then there's the weekend and she comes in and has hundreds of emails Monday morning because she's great about not checking it when she's at home, which is fantastic. And so trying to solve that has become an interesting challenge, you know, because then her first day back is shot with just all emails. And so we're trying to figure that out. That's yeah. a big piece. We're looking into virtual assistants and things that, to help manage inbox, help manage calendar. And as you get more and more into the world and out of your computer, which I think a business owner really ultimately should end up there, you know, mm -hmm. they, it's really hard to manage your inbox and the the communication channels that you once have so heavily relied on are not where you should be relying on anymore oftentimes. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the transition I'm finding myself in as an owner is I used to be the, I, we, we pride ourselves on being responsive, caring for clients, being there quickly. And now it's not really where I should be. So I have to really change my mindset on where I spend my time. And part of it is we have to change our clients. Um, mindset too. They're used to email Mickey and he'll get back to you quickly. And I'm like, no, no, email support, email our support address. The one I told you about, they'll get back to you quickly. If you email me, I still get back to him quickly, which is a problem, but <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to wean them off of that. So yeah, because and for years I told them, I said, email me if you need anything. And so they've learned, cool. I emailed them now and say, no, no, don't email me anymore. Email that support address to make us more productive. And they don't like that. So that's <laughs> an interesting, so productivity. I know a lot of our business owner friends love tools, right? You know, what, what kind of tools are you using? So Mickey mentioned a few things in passing. Um, we do have one email address, support at Greenmail, and, you know, and that goes directly to one system with one person that answers it and 
essentially the traffic director to any small things that need to be done on the websites we manage, the clients we care for. So that is actually a tool that I've never really considered yeah. being a very helpful um, tool because if that person is off, we can redirect those emails to somebody else on the team and they can answer. And clients don't have to worry about who's on vacation or if they email yeah. that and they get taken care of. It's a win-win all the way around. So that yeah. works well. And then we use ClickUp for project management. I would say the best tool out of that is our project manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the person behind She can it. use whatever she wants, I think. <laughs> yeah, but she, she does well with that. But I think the big thing that turned for us, I think it was in 2013, we started learning more about processes and what she would have written next. We had great processes, but they were all up here. And so in 2013, after one of the WordCamp sessions we went to, we got to talk about his process. We said, oh my gosh, we need to do that too. So now we have pages and pages of processes, but it makes it good. So if someone comes in, they know, here's how we need to launch a site. And here's how we need to set up this. And we're always, always trying to improve that, but getting that in place, again, we didn't know that from day one. I would have gone back and done that in 2009 instead of 2013. Yeah. But yeah, getting that in place has helped a ton for productivity for all of us. That's so awesome. That's awesome. Okay, uh, last question for both of you. Um, if somebody is out there that's thinking about taking the leap to either start a side hustle or take their side hustle and make it a full-time business, what advice would you give them? Hmm. You see, I, I like that I needed the comfort. Again, we're not risk takers, so it makes it difficult. I think if you had risk takers, they'd give a different kind of answer. Both of us said, I think, make sure you have your ducks in a row before you do that. You know, Don't take too big of a jump there. And I just was very fortunate that I've always had a lot of little side hustles and Google Earth blog was one because I ran a site called Google Earth Hacks and I was making money from that as well. That's how I met the other guys. So I had enough little streams of income that it made it an easier jump to, to try what we wanted. Uh, so that, I guess I would almost encourage that. If you want to start a side hustle, that's easy to do. It's when you want to take the side hustle full time, that's a much bigger, much bigger ask. Yeah, and I would consider what your passion is. So when you're growing a company and your passion is the craft that you do, you might be a better freelancer. And there is a wonderful path in freelance. I mean, you can certainly position yourselves appropriately and, and, and do very well for yourself. Um, if you're going to grow a company, just consider the craft is going to fade. You will hire somebody to do the craft most mm -hmm. likely, and you will become a managing role. You will be in the community. You will be fostering relationships and managing people. So if you're comfortable managing people and orchestrating, rather than doing your craft, then go build, go mm -hmm. build something great. And it honestly doesn't matter what the craft is because you can probably build something great. But if your love and your heart is in writing or is in producing or is in designing, then do what you love. You know, don't let, a, don't let growth take that away from you. Don't let the aspirational dreams of having a, a big company take that away from you because it will, it will pull at your, um, we were both we were both happy with that though. To, I'm happy to give up development. She's yeah. happy to give up design. But <laughs> I mean, heck, our designer we have now. She's been a freelancer forever, and she's fantastic. But part of her struggle was as a freelancer, she has to manage finding clients and dealing with all that cruff. And she said, "I just want to design," and, and so that's why she came to us. So we can just give her great things to design, and we deal with all the other garbage mm -hmm. on her behalf, so she can just do what she loves, and mm -hmm. it works out great for everyone. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Um, Allie, Nikki, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Yep. Appreciate it, man. This is great. You got it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit Hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X.com. And if you have a story you want to hear on this podcast, please visit Hiscox.com slash share your story. I'm your host, Sanjay Parikh. You can find me on Twitter at at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at sanjayparikh.com.